what you consider to be a weakness today, the struggles that you're going through today, God wants to use it. He's allowing it in your life and he's taking you through it so that he can be glorified and so that you can better also encourage and help others. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 119 of the podcast. Can you just get real? That's going to be our topic today. There's so many fake people. We're so tempted to be fake so often. Isn't that true? We've got to put on our front for everyone, even those that are close to us. Very few people know the real you. Very few people know how you really feel inside. In fact, it's possible that you don't even know sometimes. The only person that probably knows everything and does know everything actually is God. Who is the real you? Not the front, not the makeup, not the one that got put through a filter. What are you feeling? And is it okay? Is it okay to show it? We're going to talk today about realness. We're going to talk about vulnerability and how, although it's been viewed as a weakness by most people and something that will open you up to criticism, it is actually a strength. And it will deepen your relationships, not only with others, but your relationship with God. So what does vulnerability look like? It's about, first of all, just being open and honest. And I think that begins with ourself. Why do we do the things we do? That's the question that we need to ask God about. Why do I fear what I fear? Why do I not accomplish things that he's put inside of me the ability to accomplish? Why do I procrastinate? Why do I hesitate when I should move forward? Why do I miss opportunities that are laid in front of me because I don't have the confidence to go? Why am I even not as close to God as I should be because I'm afraid to open up and share with him the deep feelings of my heart? Vulnerability, it allows us when we do this to relate not only to God, but to ourselves And to others, it makes us more real, it makes us more approachable, and it actually opens up these relationships. Now, in the Bible, there are examples of vulnerability. The first one that comes to my mind is David. I mean, here was a mighty king, a king who was renowned for his bravery and his faith, right? While all the people of Israel were cowarding each and every day against the mighty Philistine Goliath. Every time Goliath would come out daily and call them, who will fight me? And they all hid. And David, the little shepherd boy, he came and in the power of God, he said, hey, there's no giant too big. God's way bigger. I'll take him on. In the power and the name of the Lord, he went and he took down the giant, Goliath, with a single smooth stone, sunk right into his forehead, and then chopped off his head and paraded it around the camp on top of a sword. It may sound a little brutal, but this was a mighty man of faith. He became king, and he was one of the most prominent kings ever. The Bible even says that David was a man who was after God's own heart. That's how God described David. And yet David, just like all of us, had his problems. And one day he takes a look and he sees the beautiful Bathsheba from his balcony in the next yard. And despite the fact that she was married to one of his best men in his army, who was away at the time, he called for her and he brought her there. And of course, she don't refuse the king. And he lied with her and then she became pregnant and it was a whole big mess. And he tried to cover it up and, and had the husband actually on the front lines left to die killed. He compounded one thing after another, and the whole thing came spiraling down. God sent the prophet to actually reveal to him that he had done a horrible thing. And now he was actually being chased away, being hunted down even by his own son. He's in remote caves. And in the Psalms, we see the stories of David in his vulnerability, in his desperation, crying out to God daily to please forgive him and to restore unto him the joy of his salvation. Maybe you've been there at times in your life 
Maybe you're there right now where it feels desperate, it feels dark, it feels like life is heavy, and you're trying to hold it all together and you've got the walls up. Maybe it's time to be vulnerable with God and to pour out your heart to Him right now and to find that joy again, to find that forgiveness, to find that restoration. It doesn't have to be this way for the rest of your life. And maybe there are others in your life as well who are struggling also, and they take a look at you, and you appear to have it all together because you're not willing to be vulnerable. You're not willing to be real. You're allowing them to see everything through the filter and the walls that you've put up. You're not able to also connect and minister to others. Jesus is another example of anyone. If anyone you would think would not have to show vulnerability, yet Jesus, even though he was 100% God, Jesus still took on our humanity. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that although he was God, we do not have a Savior who does not understand what we go through. He was tempted and he was pressured and he was tried in all ways, just as we are, yet without sin. And when he knew that he was about to be taken, taken into the hands of sinful men, he was going to be scourged, he was going to be beaten, he was going to be mocked, he was going to be crucified. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane. The stress of our sin was upon him in such a way that the Bible says that he actually sweated great drops of blood. If you ask physicians about this, you will find that it is a natural phenomenon medically that can take place when the body is under extreme amounts of stress. And Jesus did that. He had the weight of your sin and my sin all upon him. And yet, being God, the Son, he still was vulnerable with the Father as he cried out, saying, Father, if there is any way, any way that you can take this cup from me, please do it. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Was Jesus wrong in what he was saying? Was he wrong to express the stress that he was feeling? Was he wrong to be vulnerable and show that he was hurting? No, absolutely not. If Jesus could do it, then certainly you and I should follow the same example and do this as well. There's been times in my life when I failed. There's been times when, like you, I've struggled. There's been times when I should have great faith, and yet I'm afraid. And you know, There's been times when I've had to admit that, share that with others as God leads. Sometimes it's not appropriate. Sometimes it doesn't help. But there are other times when it really does. When people are going through things and I'm able to say, you know, I know how you feel. Because there was a time when I also felt the same way. But in those feelings and in those moments, this is how God helped me. This is what he showed me, and this is what I found. When we do this and we share that story, people know that they're not alone. You know, the Bible tells us there's no temptation. There's no experience that any of us go through that is not already common to man. For there's nothing new. People have gone through this. And the one who knows and understands the Lord Jesus will also provide the way of escape. But we need to be vulnerable and help each other. Understand this, vulnerability is not a bad thing. Having struggles is not a bad thing. In fact, the Bible tells us in the book of James that we'll even go through struggles so that God can make us stronger. There's one more example that I definitely want to go over, and it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. It's the Apostle Paul. And if you're familiar with the Apostle Paul, you know that God used him to pen probably half of the New Testament. We're seeing Paul who made choices to leave a life of luxury and power, to follow the Lord Jesus and to follow him wherever he would go. And yet, despite that dedication, Paul, it came to a point in his life, a point in his life where he has something that he described as a thorn in the flesh. Many scholars believe it's possibly that he was going blind and he could not see. We don't know that certainly for sure, but it was definitely something that was extremely heavy on him. 
And the Bible says that he had prayed several times, several times that God would take it away. He prayed a prayer of faith. He prayed that God would remove it all with the best of intentions so that he could continue to serve in the best way possible and the way that he th- thought fit. And yet it says in 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 and 10, that Paul said, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, Paul said, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, friends, would you consider to be a weakness today? The struggles that you're going through today, God wants to use it. He's allowing it in your life and he's taking you through it so that he can be glorified and so that you can better also encourage and help others. Yes, you've prayed for him to take it away. And it's possible that at some point he may choose to do that. Or like in the case of Paul, he may not. But through all of it, he is in control and he's going to use it. And he's going to change lives as a result of it. So we can embrace it, share it, Recognize the fact that we're vulnerable. Recognize the fact that we have weaknesses. But our God, who is the Almighty One, is all-powerful and magnified through all of it. I pray today that what we've shared today has been an encouragement to you. And I also pray that you'll be encouraged, as God gives you wisdom, to be real to express truth when it needs to be expressed, to encourage others that are struggling and seeing that they're not alone, that you go through it too. And this is what God is showing you or what he's taught you in the past. May your relationships with others and with God deepen, strengthen, and grow daily as he continues to bless you and use you in a mighty way for his honor and glory. Please also subscribe to this podcast if you have not because I don't want you to miss any of these episodes and feel free to share it with others. May God bless you. And we look forward to always hearing your stories. Please contact us and reach out to us in the various ways that are listed uh, underneath this episode. And we'd love to hear from you. I promise that when we do, as soon as I see it, I will respond. So may God bless you. And we look forward to communicating with you in future episodes. You have an awesome, awesome day.